Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship here at WPC. It is good to be with you on this, this beautiful summer day. Uh, every Sunday we gather together, we come together as a congregation, whether it's here in the sanctuary or out on the courtyard as we were last week, uh, or whether we're getting together on online. And we come together to sing songs of praise, to, to share our concerns with one another, and, and to open God's word. Really, uh, it's foundational to who we are as a church. And we come really to, to celebrate with one another, to celebrate and worship. So as we begin our service, I invite you to stand as you are able to join with me in a responsive call to worship out of Romans 8. If God is for us, who is against us? The Holy One is in our midst. In Christ, we are more than conquerors. May, may all surpassing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The joyous communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And now I invite you to pass the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. And you're welcome to walk around and greet one another. You don't need to stay right in your pew. I invite you to stay standing as we sing our first hymn this morning, The Solid Rock. Our scripture this morning comes to us from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, starting at verse 1. 
There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burdens God has laid on all. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of all. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for all than to be happy and to do good while they live. That everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. And God does it so that all may revere him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in prayer? O oh God, we come to you knowing that you alone are the Lord of the universe. We thank you that you hear our prayers, that even though you have so many different things coming to you, you still listen to each one of us. We pray, God, that you will help us to be open to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. We pray that we might become more of a missionary church, reaching out to others in the world around us. We pray for the leaders amongst us who face challenges, those of war and pandemic and food shortages. We pray, God, that you will help them to work together. We pray, God, for those who happen to be coming from other lands, that we may truly know that they are our neighbors and we may reach out to them. We pray, O oh Lord, for ourselves as God's people. We pray that you help us to follow Christ's call to be missionaries here at home, in this country, and around the world. We pray, O oh God, for those who are currently serving as missionaries, wherever they may be. We pray that you will give them strength and wisdom and insight as they reach out in your love. We pray, O oh God, that we might be conscious of the grace that you extend to us and the mercy that you pour out on us. We pray, O oh Lord, all these things in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, Summer Choir. This is my story. This is my song. This morning, we are kicking off a a summer series of sorts that we're going to be in for the next eight weeks, journeying through the book of Psalms, looking at a variety of different Psalms. And one of the main reasons we're doing so is because the Psalms help us to tell our story. The Psalms help to give us a, a language to use to tell the story of what we believe. And we're going to journey together for the next eight weeks or so, uh, just kind of unpacking a few different psalms, and I'd encourage you to find some time uh, to read through them at home as well. Uh, And and this morning, we're starting with one of my my favorites, and we'll get there in just a minute. In his his book, Open and Unafraid, David Taylor writes, "The, the Psalter opens, the beginning of Psalms open with an invitation to the reader to walk in the way that leads to life. The Psalter closes with an invitation to join all creation in praise. In the pages between, the Psalter shows us both how to walk and with whom to walk. We walk in faith alongside the people of God. We walk in hope in the sight of a watching world, and we walk with our hearts open before the face of a gracious God. So as we spend some time walking through this, this book of, of Psalms or through specific Psalms, uh, again, I'd invite you to, to either spend time unpacking what we read here on Sunday morning or, or walking through them yourself on, on your own. This morning, we're starting with a Psalm that, that became one of my favorites when I was first learning to play the guitar uh, just over 20 years ago. Uh, it, it was an easy song to learn. I'm looking to Kirby because Kirby sits up here and sings every week. Um, and he's taking jazz guitar lessons. I'm calling you out, Kirby. <laughs> and, and, and we need him to start playing here on Sunday morning, right? right? Ed, like, and that's an invitation, Kirby. So I, I was learning to play guitar a little over 20 years ago. Uh, I, was in, I was in college, and, and, and I heard this song, and I said, hey, that song, it's got two chords. I can do it. And so, so I started playing the two chords that I know, learning this song, and, and I, I learned the first part of those songs with those two chords, and by the time that I got to the third chord, I, I was singing along, and without even noticing, I, I was actually memorizing Scripture. I was, I was memorizing Psalms. A few years ago, Eugene Peterson in Bono, who, who wrote the song that I was learning, sat down and talked about music, about music in the church. Uh, and, and about the Psalms. And here's a, a quick clip from their conversation about Psalm 40. I think it's one of his, one of his best ones, and he he sings it a lot. I mean, he does this a lot. It's one of the psalms that reaches into the hurt and disappointment and uh, difficulty of being a human being, and uh, 
acknowledges that in, in a language that is immediately uh, is recognizable. You know, there's something that reaches into the heart of a person and the stuff we all feel, but many of us don't talk about. I waited and waited and waited for God. At last, he looked, finally he listened, and he lifted me out of the ditch, and he pulled me from deep mud. He stood me up on a solid rock to make sure that I wouldn't slip. He taught me how to sing the latest God song. I waited and waited and waited for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look at the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you planned for us. None can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but my, my ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offerings you do not require. Then I said, here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, Lord, as you know. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness, of your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. Do not withhold your mercy from me, Lord. May your love and faithfulness always protect me. For troubles without number surround me. My sins have overtaken me and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head and my heart fails within me. Be pleased to save me, Lord. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've mentioned before here on Sunday mornings that my mom has always been the eternal optimist in our family, someone who, who always tries to look for the positive no matter what we are going through as a family. The, the other day, I was texting back and forth with her, uh, complaining about one thing or another in the world. There's a lot to complain about right now. And, and she, was, she was doing what she always does. And she wrote, remember, I'm your glass half full mom. And I responded, mom, you can be glass half full and pull your head out of the sand. One of the reasons that I love the Psalms and one of the reasons that we're, we're unpacking the Psalms this summer, some of the Psalms, is, is that I believe the Psalms, they, they hold this tension between lament and celebration so well. The, the, the tension between the struggles we go through on a daily life and the things that, that cause us to celebrate. They, they, they hold the whole of life together in, in a way that, that helps us to give or gives us language to articulate where we stand, where we stand with God, where we stand in community with one another, and in what we believe. So in the same song, you can hear things like, he lifts me up out of the pit, out of the miry clay, and trouble and sin surrounds me. God is the one who, who pulls me out of the junk, out of the hurt, out of the pain of life, and yet I'm still surrounded by sin. I'm still consumed by trouble. Life is neither always good or completely bad. Usually, most of us spend the majority of our time somewhere in the middle. As Pastor Darrell read earlier, there's, there's a time for everything, to weep, to laugh, to mourn, to dance, for war and peace, and again, everything in between. Now, be honest, uh, when, when Pastor Darrell was reading from Ecclesiastes 3, how many of you heard or started humming along to everything turn, turn. Any mamas and the papas? Did anybody hear mamas and papas? Thank you. A few of you did. Ecclesiastes often feels so relatable because of the vantage point from which the author writes. The, the whole work 
all of Ecclesiastes, it, 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 it comes from the perspective of where the author says, look, I tried it all. I, I tried to follow the wisdom of the Proverbs. I, I tried and tried and tried, and you know what? It didn't work. It didn't work. I'm still stuck. I'm still struggling. That's why Ecclesiastes starts with meaningless, meaningless. It's all meaningless. He, he tried, and it didn't work. My guess is that most of us here, most of us here have have related to what we read in, in Ecclesiastes or we've, we've looked at something that we've read or heard in Scripture and we've said, you know what, we tried it. We tried it. We, we tried to follow what Jesus said. We tried to love that neighbor. But who's our neighbor anyway? We, we tried to do what Paul wrote about in Romans that we spent the last part of the year, better part of the last part of the year, unpacking. And you know what? It doesn't, it doesn't always feel like it works. And so Ecclesiastes, it, it, it honors that. I think the Psalms honor that as well. And yet, as the author of Ecclesiastes writes, after listing a, a litany of ups and downs, God has made everything beautiful in its time. And I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor nothing taken from it. The author of Ecclesiastes reminds us of the same thing that, that the psalmist in Psalm 40 reminds us of, and, and that's that God is faithful in and through all seasons. God was faithful in the past. God is, is faithful today. God will be faithful in the future. Now, this, this psalm is often referred to as a prayer psalm, so we can, we can almost picture a, a person sitting down and, and writing, maybe, maybe in a journal writing a, a poem of sort and saying, look, you've answered me before, God. I was thankful then and I'm thankful today for what you've done in the past, but where are you right now? How long do I have to sing to get your attention? It's as if the author knew and believed that God is faithful, but, but kind of had that, that thought in his mind, that nagging thought, well, is he really? Is he really? He begins doubting it and has to draw on the past to remind himself that God is faithful, that that is still true. Like many of the Psalms, the Psalm is a, a poem that, that follows a, a pattern, words of thanksgiving mirrored by, by words of lament. The psalm begins with a, a statement about the past. God's faithfulness was experienced in the waiting. Now, how many of you, you can, you can raise your hand or choose not to, would describe yourself as a patient person? Man, you are all much better people than I am. Uh, I'll just say that, that patience is a, is a virtue that I am constantly, constantly working toward. There's something we miss in the beginning of this psalm, when we, we only read it in, in the English translation, that I waited patiently. I, that's why one of the reasons I, I love the Eugene Peterson translation. I waited and waited and waited. In, in, in Hebrew, it's, the, the word here is really I hoped for or I expected, and it's repeated twice. So it's I waited, waited. I expected, expected. I, I really expected. The image we might want to hold to here is one that we, we don't typically associate with, with patience. It's the picture that Jesus paints in the Gospel of Luke when he tells his followers to stand at the door and knock, to be persistent, to continue to seek, to be patient but keep going. It was in the persistence that God was faithful to the psalmist. And like a, a good poet, he, he borrows phrases from two well-known illustrations to make his point. The slimy pit, the, the miry clay, they, they point to Jeremiah 38 and the struggles that Jeremiah had to overcome. And the new song, the new song is a reference to Exodus 15 when Moses and Miriam rejoice after leading the Israelite people through the Red Sea. It was clear that looking backward was an opportunity to see where God 
had shown up. To remind the psalmist, to remind himself, and to remind his people that, that, that God had been faithful. So if you're here this morning and are, are frustrated for whatever reason, or are down and out for whatever reason... I'd encourage you to find some time this week, maybe even this afternoon, to to sit down and reflect on the times when God was faithful in your life. When was God faithful in your life? When did God show up? Really, just write them out. Spend some time writing down bullet points. God was faithful at this time and this time and this time. And how might those stories of faithfulness in your own life help you today. So after looking backward, the the psalmist, he he looks upward. We can turn to God in the present and the future because of the grace that we've been shown in the past, because of what we've experienced in the past, or as we read in 1 Peter 5, that, uh, that, that God opposes the proud but shows favor in the humble, and that's been true in our history. So let's turn our attention upward. When the psalmist mentioned those who were proud, And those who relied on on false gods during this section, he's likely referring to neighboring countries, referring to to neighboring cultures, possibly even to Egypt, who would have no longer necessarily been seen as an enemy and may have been even seen as a, a noteworthy ally, but they were different. They were different. They were strong. They were successful. Everyone knew it, but they, they worshipped different gods. They worshipped in a different way. They, they lived in a different culture. So in verse 5, the psalmist writes, Many are the wonders you have done, the things you have planned. There's too many to compare, or too many to count. None can compare to you. The, the question that comes to mind here is, do I give credit where credit is due? Or am I giving credit to the same thing that everything, everybody else is giving credit to? Am I paying attention to what God is doing each and every day? And are those blessings guiding the way that I approach my life? For many of us, it takes something big to force us to, to look up, to force us to pay attention, something grand or something devastating. But we're invited here, the psalmist invites us, to live in gratitude each and every day for all that God provides and to constantly look up. And in order to do that, there's a little bit of soul searching that's required as well. So the psalmist invites us to look inward. After contrasting true worship with false worship, the psalmist writes, I desire your will, my God. Your law is written on my heart. There's a significant warning in the middle of the psalm here. In 1 Samuel 15, we read about Saul, the the first king of Israel, going through the motions. A a, a time where where he followed the law. He followed the law. Um, He participated in worship. He, He participated in the sacrifice that was required. But he was disobedient in other ways. So Samuel calls him out and says, yes, you're sacrificing, you're going through the motions, you're you're taking part in the the ritual, but you've rejected the word of the Lord. So God's going to reject you as king. The sacrifice was intended to be an outward sign of something that was stirring inside. Each one of Israel's kings, they would, have, they would have been familiar. They would have been familiar with Saul's story. So here the psalmist writes, it's not about the sacrifice. Remember Saul. It's not about the ritual. It's about living with open ears. It's about living into what God has for you. So as we look inward today, it's, it's making sure that when we show up, whether it's in worship here on Sunday morning or with our neighbor throughout the week, that the first thing on our heart is the desire to do God's will. The desire to do God's will. It's a reminder to, to check ourselves. Then in verse, verses 9 and 10, we read, I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. 
I do not seal my lips, Lord, as you know. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. So we're, we're called to look inward, to reflect on what we truly believe and on what God has done and, and to desire to do God's will. But we can't stop just with that desire. The psalmist also reminds us to, to look outward, to look outward, to proclaim, to bear witness, to give testimony to what God has done and what God is doing. So in this section, when when, when he refers to the great assembly, he's likely talking about one of the, the many festivals that the people of Israel celebrated. And, then I, and I really think there's two images that we can hold on to here. One is, is the image that, that you all are seeing right now. It's of someone standing up front proclaiming God's word, of, of telling stories, of, of telling testimony of what God has done historically in, in the lives of a people or in the life of an in individual. So that's, that's one image. And the other is of people sitting around the table or, or maybe people standing together in the courtyard telling stories, proclaiming in the great assembly, proclaiming in the festival what God has done, either historically or in the last week. This is why we're, we're very, we're, we're, we're very uh, intentional with the language we use to talk about what we do here on Sunday morning. Every Sunday when we come to worship, we're coming to celebrate. Every single Sunday. Every Sunday is supposed to be a mini Easter. You have heard me say that before. It's a chance to tell stories about what God did in our lives last week. So, let's see, we've got about 25 minutes. I thought of doing something really uncomfortable this morning, of having you, you turn around and begin sharing those stories with one another in the pews, but I know some of you are introverts like myself, and that's terrifying. But I am going to give you this challenge, at least give you a few minutes to get ready. My challenge is this, after church, out in the courtyard, or while you're on your way home, share one place where you saw God move last week. Share one place where you saw God move last week. Could have been in a conversation, could have been here in, in church, something that you saw. The, the reality is we need to build this into who we are proclaiming what God has done. Where have you seen God this week? Do you talk about that? Do we talk about that enough? You can, you can, you can share that story out while you're, you're having coffee or snacks out in the courtyard, while you're walking to your car, while you're at home, anywhere. This week, I want to give you that challenge. Where have you seen God move this week? Share that story with someone. At verse 11, the psalm moves from a prayer of thanksgiving to a, a cry for mercy. Again, as I, I mentioned earlier, this is a psalm that holds all of life together, the, the things to celebrate and, and the things to lament. As the psalmist looks outward, hearing stories, sharing stories, it's impossible to not see the pain that exists in the world. We didn't read this, this section, but there's, th this is a place where, where he writes, troubles, they, they surround me. There's, there's too many to name. Troubles surround me. Sin has overtaken me. Enemies, they're out to get me. Now, some scholars believe that verse 11 starts a completely separate poem, but I, I, don't, I don't think that's the case. I think it's, it's the psalmist reminding himself that because God had been faithful in the past, even in the midst of all the troubles that he was facing then and there, God would be faithful again. There are all kinds of psalms that, that echo this part, the second part of Psalm 40. And what I think we can appreciate in them is his brutal honesty. It, these sorts of psalms, they, they invite us to be vulnerable. They invite us to be open with God and, and with one another. So as we look outside, or look outward, I should say, as we share stories with one another, with the, the great assembly, we're also invited to share 
our hurt and to share our pain. The stories where it doesn't quite feel like God actually showed up. So where and with whom might you need to be vulnerable? The psalm ends by looking forward. In verses 16 and 17, we read this. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad. May those who long for your saving help always say, the Lord alone is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help. You are my deliverer. You are my God. Do not wait. Do not delay. There's an urgency for the psalmist. There's an urgency for those who see God, for for those who need God's help. But there's also an expectation that God will show up. Remember back to the beginning of the psalm. It's not necessarily I waited patiently, I sat by. It's I doubly expected. I hoped, hoped. And that expectation carries the psalmist forward. It should help us to move forward as well, clinging to God's faithfulness along the way. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, as we dive into the Psalms this summer, we ask that you would speak to us through them. God, that they would help us to develop a language for what we claim to believe. Lord, help us to be open, to be honest, to share stories about where we have seen you move and stories where we have struggled and are struggling. Through it all, remind us that you are faithful. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good. Let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song. Cause you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good.
So I gave you a charge or a challenge of sharing a time over the last week where you have seen God move. Some, sometime after church, find a, a way to do that, whether it's on the courtyard or on your way to your, your car. Um, another place that you can do that is at the Bloodmobile. Uh, this morning, we are, are partnering with Vitalant, an uh, organization we partnered with for the last uh, couple years. Uh, quarterly, we, we have a, a blood mobile that's, that's right behind the Fellowship Center, um, and there is a shortage, and so we, we give in the way that we can. Uh, every Sunday, there are opportunities to, to partner with, with our, our church or to partner with one another as we celebrate in worship, and one of those ways is by singing in the summer choir. You want to say anything, Ed? Sure. <laughs> I'll always say something. Um, so for the next few weeks, we're going to be meeting at 930 on Sundays, Sunday morning. We're going to be singing hymns just like we did today. Just come and sing. Do you have to have any experience? None. None. Although some is, is nice, <laughs> but you know. All, you anybody can come. Um, what about to play in the bell choir that we're starting up? Um, well, come talk to me about that. We're, we're getting close to the minimum that we need to, to get a choir going, but just, uh, just, Come talk to me about that. Yeah. We, we have a lot of bells that haven't been used for over a decade. Uh, even longer. 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 And we like to get them out and use them. And so if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, come and, and talk to Ed. There are other ways you can get involved on Sunday morning. You can talk to Jerry about ushering. Ushering is a great way to, to get to know folks in our congregation as they walk into church. Sunday school, the AV team. Um, there are a lot of ways to get plugged in. Um, we are also, in addition to, to rekindling a, uh, a, a bell choir, we are, are kicking off a, a trip this September that is a, a, a mission trip that this church used to participate in, um, and we'll be going to Mexico to build a house over a weekend uh, with the Moore Ministries, September 23rd to the 25th. Uh, if you would like to join that trip, you can let me know. Space is limited, um, and uh, the signups for that trip will begin uh, this coming Wednesday. All that we do, how, how we live with one another, um, what, what we give of our time, our talent, and our treasure uh, is worship. It is an act of worship. And so every Sunday we take, uh, we receive tithes and offerings to say, God, here's who we are. Here's what we have. Take our time, our talent, and treasure and use it for your kingdom. Let's receive this morning's tithes and offering. worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken to life. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Oh, yeah. Been faithful through every storm, and you'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things, and I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. Oh God, you do great. of heaven you conquer the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awaken to life 
Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Oh, hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh, God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken to life. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Oh, God, you do great. you pray with me oh God we give to you now our tithes and our offerings we give you ourself our time our talents and pray oh God that you will take them that you will use them for your purpose that you will help us to look upward to look outward to look inward and to look around us that we might see your great things that you have done for us and that we might share those things with others and we ask you now to accept these in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. Please remain standing for our closing hymn. I need thee every hour.
Usually I would stand up here on Sunday right before our benediction and invite you to come to a sermon study on Wednesdays out in the prayer garden, but we are going to be taking a break from the sermon study for the next uh, couple of of weeks, Uh, and so don't come on Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. unless you want to come and pray in the prayer garden. That's what it's there for, so go and pray in the prayer garden if you would like to do that. Um, We will be celebrating the life of Ray Brownfield next Saturday at 2 p.m., and the Brownfield family would love to invite the people of WBC to join in uh, on that memorial service, to join in on that celebration of life. And I should also mention, um, we said this last Sunday, but these two flower arrangements are from uh, the graveside service from from Doris Ruffner, and um, both Doris and Ray uh, had such an important role in this church as well as in the city of of, of Westlake Village. And so we'd invite you to come and be here uh, next Saturday at 2 p.m., And then later on in the month, uh, we have our our continuing our ACF summer talk series with a movie night on on, uh, the movie Blue Miracle. And one of our deacons, Reinhard Denke, is going to be facilitating a conversation after we watch the movie together. And uh, we did a couple of these when we were only meeting over Zoom, where we would watch the movie and then have a discussion. And the Adult Christian Formation Committee said, hey, it'd be really fun to watch the movie together and then talk about it. Uh, And Reinhardt is an incredible facilitator of those conversations. So so join us on Tuesday, uh, the 26th. And now as we continue through our summer, and as we approach whatever it is that is in front of us, may we remember that God is faithful. Go out with the love of God the Father, with the grace offered through Jesus Christ, God's only Son, and with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.